Hello, dear friends. This is Pastor Roy Olson, a missionary to Romania, with some thoughts. In today's atmosphere uh, here in the United States and uh, elsewhere in the world, with this uh, virus going around, there are many tragedies happening, people dying, being infected. It truly is a international epidemic with unspeakable uh, suffering at this time. However, in God's infinite economy, the fear and the trepidation that people have uh, tends to uh, break apart the husk, the shell of atheism and agnosticism and everything like that. And people are actually turning to God, asking questions. And where are they going to go? Well, we say you will go to the churches. No, the, the churches are closed. At least the buildings are. So what's supposed, someone supposed to do? Dear friends, I believe that the, the, the future of evangelism throughout the world is not bringing people to church just, or bringing them to stadium events, or even watching television uh, with evangelists and so on. God has used those things, of course, and, and we, we prize that and we honor God and those servants of his who are so involved. But the future belongs to those in evangelism who have honed the skills of personal evangelism. What does that mean? That means that someone within your a relationship sphere or a casual acquaintance uh, might uh, bring up a question or something of that nature relating to God and salvation uh, and so on. Or you might even create that opportunity by asking a question that um, if you were to die, do you know that you would go to heaven? Or something of that nature. Of course, you want to uh, be appropriate in the uh, context and so on, and just not be a, a negative approacher. So I have some suggestions. Uh, suggestion number one is uh, seek the Holy Spirit to lead you and to guide you, not your emotions or your inferiority. Uh, nobody... Uh, is, is uh, highly successful in their first attempts to share the gospel. Yes, there is a learning curve uh, to this. Uh, number one, seek the Holy Spirit. Number two, do not get into arguments or debates such as which ch uh, church is correct or whether evolution or creation is is um, uh, correct scientifically or historically. Avoid rabbit trails. M make, the, uh, make the primary message the primary message. And, uh, and, and then be prepared to share with one, a person one-on-one -on -one, uh, how they can know that they have eternal life. Your approach will differ depending on whether, uh, on their church background, on their religious background, uh, whether they are a Muslim or whether they are a Hindi or, or something of that nature, your approach will be different. We work in Romania. In Romania, 87% of the population uh, is Orthodox, not Greek Orthodox, Re uh, Russian Orthodox, just plain vanilla Orthodox. 
The Orthodox Church has done a very, very valuable service to the kingdom of God by teaching people who Jesus Christ is, what he did, and, uh, and uh, the basics of the gospel. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the weakness uh, has been that they tend, when you ask an Orthodox person, you know, do you, do you, if you were to die, do you know you'd go to heaven? The, the, the majority would say, I hope so. I'm trying. In other words, uh, they have a works-based uh, faith of uh, hope of eternal life. Again, we don't criticize their faith. We build on the faith that they already do have. So, for instance, if, if I have an Orthodox person or a, a Roman Catholic person or somebody with some basic understanding of who Jesus Christ is and what he has done, you can say, well, well, I, I have some good news or some interesting news for you, and take whichever Bible you would. Now, because I can speak Romanian, uh, I use the Romanian language Bible or the Cornelescu uh, version of the Bible, and I have it with me so they know that I'm not giving them a Baptist or Pentecostal or Evangelical Bible. I'm using their own Bible. And I, I would turn to John chapter 3, verse 16, the golden verse. And I would encourage everyone who is listening, if you, do, if you have not done so already, commit that verse to memory. It's in your toolbox. You'll need it for personal evangelism. You'll need it for yourself. And you'll need it to share the kernel, the essence of the gospel as contained in John 3.16. Uh, I'll say it, uh, John 3.16 in the Romanian language. Of course, we know it in the English language, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so if you have somebody before you, you know, break to them the utter simplicity of John 3.16. And, and you, you begin with the, the love. For God so loved the world, and therefore, my, my friend, my brother, my sister, whoever you might be, God so loves you, doesn't hate you, he's not trying to get you back, he's not vindictive. No, he's, he loves you. And how much does he love you? 10%? God can only love you with all his heart. There's no such thing as experiencing half of the love of God. Uh, God, that's who God is. God is love. So number one, for God so loved the world and, and, and you are the world, not the planet. You, uh, to whomever you're speaking. God loves you. And then you go on to, that he gave his only begotten son. And uh, do you know his name? Yes, that's right. His name is Jesus. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his name is Jesus, that whoever believes in him, okay, whoever believes in him, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Oh, yes. Now, very often in Romania, they'll say, yes, I pray to him every day, especially the, the grandmothers, you know, sitting in front of the house in the cool of the evening, or, or some of the men. So, of course, I believe in Jesus. And uh, so he said, for God so loves you, that he gave Jesus. And you know what that means. Uh, Jesus uh, uh, is God, manifest in flesh. Jesus is God. 
Jesus is the Son of God, and Jesus died on the cross for sins, and he rose again from the dead. Do you believe that? Well, whoever believes in him, and that's the basics of believing in him. Jesus Christ is who he said he is. He's God the Son. He died on the cross for sins. And you ask him, he died for the sins of the world, yes? Yeah. Did he die for your sins? Yes. I ask for forgiveness every day or something of that nature. Then you go, now whoever believes in me, you believe in him. Yes, you got it. You believe in him. Okay, watch this. Whoever believes in him, two things happen. Number one, they should not perish. Somebody who believes in Jesus Christ should not perish. Number one. And number two, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes? Oh, great. Now, watch what Jesus himself, who is speaking in this verse here, watch what Jesus said. Because of your faith in him, because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, two things. Number one, you should not perish. No. No, why? Because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, um, but have everlasting life. Because of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, what do you have? Watch it. Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. And at this point, you can ask the person if they believe the scripture, if they believe the scripture is God's word, and then uh, say to them, well, Jesus doesn't lie. And he said, because you believe in him, two things. You should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let me ask you now, because of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, what will not happen to you? Well, should not perish. That's what it says. Yes. And what do you have as a result because you are believing in the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So let me ask you a question. Not based on your emotions, not based on your you feel, not based on how good you are, not based on how much you go to church, and not based on how much money you give, but based on your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. According to this scripture, if you were to die, do you know that you would go to heaven? Well, you know, I, 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 I don't deserve it. I don't. Well, nobody deserves it. It's a gift. Well, according to this, because I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, I should not perish but have everlasting life. Then the question is, do you or do you not have everlasting life according to the Bible? Well, I guess I do. And then it's time to pray. And you can pray for them. They can repeat a prayer or something like that. And then you can welcome into the family of God. Are there some objections to this uh, method? Of course there are. And I'll deal with them in the next video. God bless you. Thank you for listening. And may God lead you to become the, uh, the witness of his love, of his grace, and of his free salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. See you next time. God bless you. Bye.